Um, earlier in the week, I posted a poll on our Instagram page, Honey's Doodle Farm, um, asking if any of y'all were interested in getting to hear Honey's birthing story and um, getting to meet the puppies. And I know a lot of you only voted yes because of the puppies, but it's okay. You get to hear it all today. Um, so the little guys are actually eating right now. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to first i think it's really important that you guys know a little bit more detail about honey and buddy and why this litter is so special for us and then we'll actually get into the birth story and a few other crazy stories that happened right before honey went into labor so let's go okay so i'm gonna start from the beginning so um we're gonna start with buddy so up until about April of 2020, my mom had been vigorously searching for a golden doodle and she had been doing all the research and she was in all kind of doodle groups. So we just could never find one that we felt would fit with our family. Either it was too expensive or there was something wrong with it that like would create ladder issues and just different things like that. So she started praying about it and God, <laughs> and um, she saw a post about a lady who was looking for a service doodle for her younger son. Underneath that post, because my mom will read the comments because sometimes people list and advertise. And my mom found a buddy's previous owner actually post two golden doodles. And so my mom contacted her and we actually drove like an hour, an hour and a half to go and meet Buddy. When we got there, there was some crazy stuff happening and we were just not sure. And I won't disclose that for confidentiality to his previous owners because they are sweethearts. Um, the circumstances just were not good and it was an unfortunate event for everybody. And Buddy was not getting the attention and care he needed. He was very much loved and they absolutely loved him and stuff. But for a golden doodle, I'm just going to put an insert here. Golden doodles require a ton of care, okay? Um, you have to brush them and because they're coats and then they're so energetic. So you have to constantly get exercise out, walk them, just different things like that. And if you don't have that time, it can lead to some really negative effects on the dog. So we, we did end up getting Buddy and we had to shave him completely. I will insert a picture here. And his ears were like down to here and they were matted. And his brother, like for example, his brother when the groomer shaved him came off in one piece his whole coat. Buddy came off in very large pieces. There were a few of them. It wasn't as severe as his brother, but still pretty bad um, because doodles mat so easy because of their curls. So after he had gotten all that heavy hair off of him and he started being like played with and just different things like that. He was an amazing, he was an amazing dog before, but it was so much fun to watch his actual true personality come out. And he is probably one of the most clingiest dogs I have ever met, <laughs> but it is the cutest thing and we wouldn't want it any other way. So for Honey, we got Honey um a few months after buddy and it was january of 2021 so this year this january we went and picked up honey um my mom saw a post on facebook again um advertising their standard female poodle and she was only nine months old so we drove again another hour hour and a half to look and meet her 
And when we got there, Honey would not even come near us. We could not pet her. She would not like, if we got near her, she would like go ballistic. So we were really worried about it. And I was like, no mom, I have a good feeling. And I kept trying to convince my mom just because I really wanted a dog because um, in December, I lost my 16 year old Shih Tzu to cancer. Um, she lived a very long, full life, but it was just really sad to see her go. And sometimes a distraction is really good. And so I was really adamant about getting honey. Um, so we got her, we got her in the car. She warmed up to Buddy. And by the time we were home, I will insert a video in a second of what actually happened. But when we got home, she like started showing her true self and hopping all over the yard like a little bunny. So I'm gonna put that in now and then we'll finish talking after. we got honey and we did have to shave her as well because she's a standard poodle so her hair is a little bit more curlier so even though she was taken care of to an extent her hair still was not brushed every single day so she matted um again same thing like buddy super super sweet owners just a really unfortunate situation led to them not being able to provide her with the amount of care she needed and so, um, what is so special about these dogs is besides their breed and their personalities and anything like that, both of them came into our lives at really hard times. Um, the October before we got Buddy, my grandpa did pass away and Buddy was just kind of like, a really good light he was a distraction and he just really helped us with that beginning stage of grief and same thing with honey you know I had said I'd lost my 16 year old Shih Tzu and she was just kind of there and a distraction and a way to help get through grief and these dogs have just been absolutely amazing and literally a godsend to our family so this litter of puppies is just so special to us because, you know, I mean, that's their babies. And both Honey and Buddy are obsessed with each other, so I'll insert that here. Um, they literally will cry if one leaves and the other does not. So for example, my goodness, Honey got into rat poison, the week she went into labor. So this was the interesting story I had to tell y'all. And it was one of those little black boxes and she chewed it open. She is very handy at that and got into the actual rat poison tab. So it was almost immediately, my mom had rushed her to the uh, vet clinic, the emergency room, because it was like seven, eight at night. And they were able to pump her, give her an IV and morphine and all kind of stuff with charcoal. So she ended up being okay. But when we took her for her checkup the next day to make sure everything was okay, I ended up having to take Buddy and put him in the back seat because when I closed the door, I really thought the door was gonna break. So yeah, um, he hates being away from her. But that is a little bit of background about our babies. Um, so I guess we can get into Honey's birth story. So like I said earlier, um, Honey did get into rat poison and luckily we were able to catch it early enough. Kudos to my mom, superwoman. Um, and so we were really, really hoping Honey would hold off till her due date, which was the 29th. So, um, she did not. <laughs> she, 
she went into active labor on Saturday. Friday night, we had noticed a few little things that could be like, oh, it'll be soon. Um, but Saturday, while I was at my boyfriend's house, my mom checked her temperature. And when a dog goes into active labor, their temperature will drop from in the hundreds to 99.98. And Honey's had dropped to 98.4. So I came home and um, stayed with her all day because my parents had somewhere to be. And there was, I mean, she was miserable, but there was nothing else happening. Thank God, because after I saw the birth, I could not have done it by myself. So, Sunday morning, there were still no puppies. Um, just very, very, very restless night for my mom and Honey because my mom stayed with her. Um, Honey basically walked around our house the entire night. She couldn't get comfortable, poor baby. She'd try to lay down, have to get right back up. And let me remind you that her babies were so active in her belly. Like, I'm gonna insert a video. So that is what was going on all Saturday night. I mean, it had been leading up to it, but Saturday night is when her belly started to get hard and start contracting and so it was very painful to have really hyperactive puppies and a contracting belly um so sunday we get back from church around noon still no puppies um we eat lunch do all kind of like we just chill and it's around four when we saw like okay it's time but my mom and my grandma had gone to walmart to pick up some medicine and the walmart's only like five minutes down the road from us so it's not too too far honey at this point wanted nothing to do with anyone um she went in my parents room where she sleeps and laid down and so i went to check on her and my sister came in and we were letting her out. Well, when she was standing up, there was stuff starting to drip. And I was like, that's not normal. And so when she got outside and she thought she had to use the bathroom and she was pushing. And out comes a little foot. <laughs> so I called my mom and I'm like, mom, you have to get home. There is a foot coming out of honey. So they're rushing home. And by the time they get here, Honey is awkwardly trying to walk around our yard thinking she still has to go to the bathroom. And my mom ended up having to help get the puppy out because she was breached. Um, so the first puppy was born in our backyard. <laughs> so we hurry, we rush, and we get Honey inside, get her in her whelping box. And it wasn't... Like it was a really, really fast process after that. Um, she had three puppies within 15 minutes. Then she took a break and had three more puppies, took a break, had two puppies and took like five, 10 minutes and had the ninth puppy, which is our last puppy. Our litter is nine. Um, so it was very, very crazy. And but it was amazing to watch Honey, um, her motherly instincts kick in. And it wasn't until about the third puppy when she finally got the hang of it and we were really worried because she wouldn't even go around the first puppy. And we were like, oh my God, she's gonna be a horrible mom. But no, she is an amazing mom. Um, she took over and while she was giving birth, the babies were eating. So she is amazing at cleaning them and all kind of good stuff. But that is her birth story. I keep looking over there because they're eating and they're making all kind of little noises. Um, it was really quick, even though she was in labor for like, um, it was about 34 hours. Yeah, it was, it was a long time. It was at least 30 hours she was in labor. And so she was exhausted, 
but mama and babies are doing good and so this is the moment all of you have been very anxiously waiting for I'm sure um, we're gonna introduce you to our babies <laughs> so before I tell you all the details um, we the, our litter theme is um, pumpkins not technically pumpkins but like fall themed um, and so we did name we named um, because we didn't want We didn't want to just call them colors like red and pink. So we named them. Oh my goodness. Okay. We named them like fall themed things. Um, so this is our firstborn, and she was the biggest <laughs> and the ficiest. So this is Spice, <laughs> um, as you can see, her name fits her very well. So yeah, this is Spice. I'm gonna go give her back to mama because she's not happy. Then a few minutes after um, Spice was born, we had Orange or Harvest. And he is a sweetheart. Oh my goodness, he is so sweet. <laughs> he's got the little, <laughs> he's got the little white spot. And he is super, super king, uh, like wavy. So that means when his coat grows out, he will be extremely curly, which is a good thing. That's what a lot of people want. But besides that, he is just an absolute sweetheart. <laughs> He just likes to be cuddled and held, and most of them do. Most of them love to be like held and loved on. So, and see their little black is coming in on their um, noses and their paws, so they look sick, they're not, I promise. <laughs> they're just growing up. So almost right after um, orange, we had yellow and this is Casper. And most of them have this little white spot and we have no idea where they got it from, but he, he is also a sweetheart and he loves to bury his face if you cannot tell. Um, he is the lightest of all of them. Actually, no, he's the lightest boy of all of them, but he is just the sweetheart and yeah that was casper and then in the next set we had um mr green or chestnut he is the smallest boy and he also has the white mark oh look he's so sleepy <laughs> and as you can see he is going he's growing into his coat um the older they get the curlier they get and so he's gonna be pretty curly, it looks like. He's got nice waves. Um, he is such a beautiful color. He is very golden. Um, he's the darkest, so hence the name Chestnut. And just look at this. Look how sweet that is. And all of the puppies are like this, even Red. But she was just hungry and so she was acting out but they all just literally love to be held <gasps> that was so sweet so that is chestnut then we had mr blue or butternut let me see if i can oh look at him. and he is the one to me he looks the most like buddy um, he's got his little white mark and he is apparently camera shy because every time I move him, there we go. <laughs> so he reminds me the most of Buddy, our doodle. Um, the older he gets, the curlier his coat is seeming to appear. Um, he's not as curly as the rest, but he is still going to have some nice curls and he is a sweetheart 
hence the name Butternut because he's just, he's so sweet. Oh, and he loves to be held. So that is Butternut. And then we have Mr. Purple. He is so sweet, but he's discovered his little voice box earlier than the rest. Um, he is super curly. You can see all the little rivets. He's got the white spot and he likes to sleep and eat very funny. Um, so that is pretty much all about him. He's pretty chill other than the fact that he screams when he eats. Like, look at his little curls on his head. Oh. Show the people your curls. Oh, he's over it. He said, no. So, this. I just could sit here and show you guys them all day because he literally just lays here. But anyway, this is Acorn. I don't know if I said his name earlier. So, he is just literally out, and this does not hurt them. Um, I have his under, oh goodness, and I have it wrapped around their little middle section. They actually really like being held like this. Um, <laughs> so, that is Acorn. And then we have, <laughs> she is out. Then we have Ginger. Um, she was number eight. No, number seven, she was number seven. And this is her coat. She's gonna be very pretty and curly. She's one of the only ones in our litter without a little white spot, but um, her paws are getting light and like right here and it looks like she will actually have and in her front paws um, it looks like she will have some socks possibly so that's something you'll have to stay tuned to be updated on but she is a funny sleeper she is the funniest one to sleep she is all over the place and she can literally sleep however I think it's just funny to watch them look like she she was one of our first ones actually she was the first one to start getting her coloring and her nose and her little paws so she is almost done um but she is an absolute sweetheart and this is all the time this is literally how she is 24 7 except when she's eating but even then she's halfway asleep she is a sleepy girl Literally just, <laughs> she's as limp as can be. But yes, yeah, so this is Ginger and she is a sweetheart. <gasps> she was waving. This little girl is Maple. Um, She is our runt. She was only 9.4 ounces when she was born. So she is super little. Like if she, like this, literally, the palm of my hand is, <laughs> they are all so sleepy today. Um, but yes, this is Pink and her name is Maple and she is a an hil an hilarious sleeper. She sleeps funny. Um, not quite as funny as Gray, but she could be there. Oh goodness. Gray is just a really hard sleeper, um, Hazel. But she is, the older she gets, the curlier she is getting. You can see some area. <laughs> some area. They all really like their head over um, like a finger or a hand or something. They do that on Honey. They lay across Honey's arms and legs. So, but anyway, she's not too dark. She's a really pretty color. Um... She is got the she's got the biggest white spot of the group. 
besides being the tiniest. So this is sweet little Miss Maple. And we're off to meet the last pup. So this is Miss Beige and she is the youngest. She is our last puppy born. Um, her name is Hazel and she is the whitest. She looks the most like honey. She is super, super sweet, super calm. She is super curly. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, you can. All the little rivets. Um, she also likes to bury her face. And don't interrupt her during eating because it's not, she hates it, which I did. So, but she loves to be held and cuddled. And surprisingly, she was the third biggest out of the girls. Consider it normally the last or the runt, but oh goodness, she was not. Her sister was. Um, so these are our babies. Um, we are absolutely in love. All of their personalities are so cute. And they're just all super, super, super sweet. And they love to be held and cuddled. Um, and as time goes on and they begin to grow, we are going to keep you guys updated. And the best way is through our Instagram, which you're probably watching this on right now. Um, we I post almost all the time, at least four times a week. I was trying to think, but it's, it's a lot more than that. Um, so, yeah, we will see you guys next time. Oh.